It is winter in South Africa, and the Karoo National Park is a barren wilderness. There seems to be no life here. But for Louis Liebenberg, the landscape is full of clues which reveal the presence of animals. I've always had a childhood fascination with wildlife and the wilderness. With the bushmen and tracking, they all have a, a mystique. If you combine them all, it's one huge mystery. What has happened in the past is that your, your traditional bushman who hunt with bow and arrow has a very, very refined um, observational skills. And they would be able to interpret spur even small animals right down to the finest detail. Liebenberg has spent much of the last 15 years living with South Africa's bushmen and learning how to track animals. To preserve this rapidly disappearing art, Louis uses his skills as an illustrator to produce books on tracking. Trackers can not only pick up the presence of animals, they can actually see what the animals were doing, how many they were, whether they were males or females. And what we have here is a clip springer track. It's been hopping from there to there and over here. You can see the front feet. And then from the direction you can visualize the way it was hopping on the rocks. Because you Clipspermity would have been drinking down here. And what we have here is a water mongoose spur. You can see quite distinctly the long, almost finger-like toes with the claws. And you can see it's been quite busy up and down here. Each animal is integral to the park's fragile ecosystem. Essential to managing this balance is recording animal numbers and understanding their behavior. Park managers have always lacked an unobtrusive way of monitoring wildlife. Liebenberg realized that the tracker's observational skills were a perfect tool. The problem was finding a way for the mainly illiterate trackers to record and collate the information they gathered. He developed the answer in the form of a unique field computer, the cyber tracker. The computer's interactive icons were first used by trackers to record the exact location and behavior of the park's endangered black rhinoceros population. When a tracker walks through the field, he sees a lot of natural signs which reflects complex movements of animals. The interface of the little field computer is designed to reflect the observations that the tracker would make in the field itself. Okay. You're gonna find a buffalo or not? Okay. <laughs> James JJ Minye, a tracker in the Karoo National Park has been working on the pilot cyber tracking project for the last two and a half years. It was only with political change in South Africa that park managers began to accept Liebenberg's plans for revitalizing the role of trackers, previously considered little more than unskilled laborers. The whole irony is that I found that the trackers, even though they can't read or write, took to the computer much easily than the scientists and the managers did. They felt it was just inconceivable that a tracker who can't read or write could ever use a computer. And yet when I discussed the idea with some of the trackers, even before we had the computers, um, to them it was a very obvious thing to do. Louis has developed a training program for trackers to give back the skills he learned from the Bushmen who are among the best trackers in the world. Today, he's assessing the progress JJ has made in using the field computer. Okay, you want to put it in? The tracker navigates his way through a series of icons representing the animals and their behavior. And then the large ones here. It's a yellow. Okay, do you think you want to put it in? Yeah. He starts by inputting general information and then adds progressively more detail. This one here. 
It's an R valve. Okay. Can you see which way did, which direction did it come? Uh, it come from that side. Okay. Right here, okay. In this way, he can record refined observations mm -hmm. in a simple way. When the tracker finishes, he presses stop, and a global satellite positioning system pinpoints the exact time and location. Eh, we computers na taka kulo kuba indo kala ufunda indo ba isluanya na isindo na isibenzi sa yu kutia and you know na isiporo eh si si na si kangela yu si fumansi indo ba i experience yaki ya ya paka amakuba ufunda uboni indo isinzi kaka kulo ngo isibenzi la computer. So far, we've had trackers gathering more than 100 observations a day. On one day, it was 266 observations, which is quite stunning. If you look at the wealth of detail that they've been gathering. At the end of the day, when the trackers come back, put the little computer in a cradle, they press a button, and it automatically downloads the information onto the bigger computer, which accumulates a database of all the observations that they've made. The system allows analysis of specific behaviours, as well as longer-term population trends. All have far-reaching implications for conservation, anti-poaching and improved park management. But for Louis Liebenberg, the cyber tracker is not about conservation alone. It's also about recognising the value of the trackers. <laughs> If you look at the whole history of our national parks in South Africa, people like JJ would have been subjected to racial prejudice, to academic prejudice. So really for this project to succeed, you have to break down all those levels of prejudice for people like JJ to be recognised. And I think it's done a lot for the trackers, for their self-esteem and their own pride to be able to show what they can really do. It's the next two to three years that are really crucial to the project, whether we're going to survive it or not. And in that sense, the Rolex funding is quite opportune. Even more than the financial benefits is the actual recognition for the project itself. Oh, okay. What this award would do is it will really open up opportunities which could get the ball rolling and even see it go international. I think essentially what I'm hoping to achieve with the CyberTracker system is to take what could be the oldest science going back hundreds of thousands of years at the very time that it is dying out and to revitalize it into a modern science that could have far-reaching implications for environmental conservation. <laughs>